So now it's time for the warm-up portion of the class. We'll spend around 10 minutes warming up. First of all, sitting in your seated mountain, Maitri Asana, we're going to drop our arms and let them hang loosely from the shoulder joints. So remember, you want to keep your core long and tall and strong. You want to keep the body in seated mountain. But the arms are doing something different. They're just hanging loosely like they're wet spaghetti noodles. You have no control over them. Shake the hands a little bit and loosen up the fingers and shake the arms a little bit and loosen them up as well because we hold a lot of tension in the shoulders and the neck. Okay, now noticing your breathing, we're going to start rolling the shoulders very, very gently. And it doesn't matter if you roll the shoulders one at a time, like I'm doing now, or some students prefer to roll them both at the same time. That doesn't matter. So whatever way you like to roll your shoulders, just start with very small little circles. You may have some shoulder problems. You may have some bursitis or some other issues in the shoulder where movement, even this sort of small movement, hurts. So you have to be very, very careful and start small. We always start with the smallest movement possible. And if the joints approve, the muscles approve, the body approves, then we can make the, the movement a bit more dramatic. But the one thing we never want to do is let ego come into class and push the body beyond its current limits because that's when injury and pain come in. And we're trying to avoid that. <laughs> so let's pause the shoulder rolls and then go in the opposite direction. So the other thing that we always do in yoga, any type of yoga, is we're trying to promote balance, balance in everything. So we start with the body. If we go counterclockwise, we try to go clockwise for the exact same amount of time. If we go right, we go left. If we go forward, we go backwards. So we're promoting balance in the body and that will eventually bring balance to the mind and the emotions and the spirit. It all happens naturally. You don't have to force any of it. So once you feel like you've been going in both directions the same time, for the same amount of time, you can stop those shoulder rolls. Let's put our hands back on our thighs and take a deep breath in through the nose and a sigh through the mouth. The sigh is important. One more time. A deep breath in through the nose, filling your lungs as completely as you can, and then a nice sigh out through the mouth. Make sure that you are focusing on exactly what you are doing. The mind likes to wander off. You'll be sitting here watching me and trying to do your yoga poses. And all of a sudden the mind will start thinking about the grocery list or what are you going to do after this yoga class or what did you do yesterday? The mind likes to think. And there's nothing wrong with that. If the mind didn't think, where would we be? But during your yoga class, you're trying to train the mind not to think. We try to move from a state of thinking when we first sit down. We move from that into more of a state of feeling where we're not thinking so much. And then hopefully by the end of class, we've passed those and gone into the state of simply being. So from thinking through to feeling and then into being. And that's where the deepest relaxation occurs. Okay, so remember that. You want to feel more than think. It's hard. So let's move into what we call cat-cow stretches for the back and for the spine. We make sure that we're sitting away from the back of the chair or we'll hit the back of the chair when we flex the spine. So we'll start with our hands on our thighs and we'll take a nice breath in through the nose. And when you exhale, you're going to tilt your pelvic bowl back Hands will move to the knees, shoulders will come forward like you're hugging your heart, and your head will go down. So you're flexing your spine like a letter C. Now when you inhale, your hands will slide up your legs, your pelvic bowl will rock forward, the hands will end up around the hip creases, your elbows will go back as far as they can, 
you'll push your chest forward and you'll look up as much as you can. Be very careful not to look way back. We are in the warm-up stage of the class and extending, overextending the neck can be harmful. So be very cautious of that. All you need to do is look up a little bit. Nothing has to be extreme. Okay, so every time we exhale, we slide the hands to the knees, tuck the pelvic bowl under, drop the head, hug the heart, and this is called cat stretch. And every time we inhale, the hands slide up to the hip creases, elbows back, engage the shoulder blades, push the chest forward, look up, and keep going. Every time you exhale, you go into cat stretch, and the pelvic bowl tilts, and every time you inhale, the hands come up to hip creases, and this is an extension of the spine, the cow or the dog stretch. Let's try a couple of those matching the exact rhythm of your breath. That's very, very important. The body movements and the breath need to be in perfect sync. So every time you exhale, you are looking down, and every time you inhale, you're looking up. And the spine is moving carefully through flexion and extension. This is flexion, and this is extension. Now again, if you have spinal issues, you've got some back issues where you have to be very cautious with these movements, your cat and cow stretches can be very subtle. They can be like this. They can be very, very small and gentle. You are still moving. You're still giving your body a little bit of movement. And if you have no problems at all in the spine, you can make your flexions and extensions as extreme as you want if it feels good. But remember, this isn't about proving anything. You're not supposed to have any expectations of yourself. There's nothing to prove. All we're trying to do is make the body a healthier vessel and make it more balanced. So you can continue those for as long as you feel you would like to. But for time's sake, we're going to end it here. Now the next thing we're going to do for the spine is we're going to laterally flex the spine from side to side to warm it up. And again, we do this with caution. So I'm going to sit proud in my mountain, my seated mountain. I'm going to drop my arms to my sides and loosen them up like those are wet spaghetti noodles again, just hanging from the shoulders. Now as you go from side to side, side flexion or lateral flexion of the spine, it's again important that you keep the chest lifted away from the pelvic bowl. If we slouch and go from side to side, that's too many movements for the spine. There's, the spine is going in too many directions and you are increasing the cause of injury to the spine. Keep the spine proud. Keep that string lifted up from the top of your head. Keep your sits bones grounded and keep the chest away from the pelvic bowl. So when my arms are hanging loosely at my sides, to help me ground the pelvic bowl and keep my lower core strong, I'm going to first bring in my belly button muscles. And that's not easy for everybody. If you have very weak abdominal area, that's a challenge but try it. Just bring in the belly button muscles as if the belly button's trying to go through the body and connect with the spine. We call this Uddiyana Bandha. So bring in your Uddiyana Bandha and then take a nice breath in and when you exhale, you're just going to lean from the waist up. So when I exhale, my upper body leans to the right, my right arm is reaching down like I'm picking a flower off the ground but I'm trying to keep my pelvic bowl and my sits bones grounded on the seat of the chair. What happens is sometimes people will forget that they're trying to keep their sits bones grounded, both of them. The left sits bone may come off and the whole body leans and you may even fall off your chair. So make sure that you keep both sits bones grounded, your Uddiyana Bandha in place, and only lean from the waist up. So my right hand is reaching down, my chest is still proud away from the pelvic bowl, and I'm trying not to let my head go forward too. I'm keeping my head in line with the rest of my body, so I'm in one plane, or I'm trying to be. 
like I'm sandwiched between two panes of glass. There's one in front of me and there's one behind me. And I'm trying to go from side to side between those two panes. Okay, the next time I inhale, I'm going to bring everything back up to neutral and I'm grounded on both sits bones evenly. So when I exhale, I go off to the other side. My Uddiyana Bandha is engaged. I lean to the left. My left hand reaches down. My head hangs off to the left. I'm still keeping my chest proud and I'm leaning between those two panes of glass, one in the front and one behind me. I inhale back up to center and ground it through both sits bones. So let's try it a little faster. Take a breath in. Exhale, bring in the Uddiyana Bandha, lean to the right, reach down, head hangs, and inhale back up to center. Exhale, lean down with the left hand. Inhale up to center. Exhale, lean to the right between your panes of glass and inhale up to center. And exhale, lean to the left and inhale up to center. Good. We'll put our hands back on our thighs. Let's take a deep breath in through the nose and sigh through the mouth. <sighs> Moving along, we'll now rotate the spine very gently, very slowly and carefully. So, as always, the sits bones are grounded, the crown is reaching up towards the sky, and we're trying to keep the chest away from the pelvic bowl. This is the best place for the spine. Let's twist it a little bit. We'll take a nice deep breath in, and when we exhale, engage that Uddiyana Bandha, and from the waist up again, we're going to rotate the upper spine, the mid to upper spine, to the left, and you're going to rest your left arm on the back of the chair, and your right arm on the outside of the left thigh. Now notice if your knees go together, and if they do, fix that. Keep your knees, your thighs, hip width apart, just like your feet. Notice also if the spine slouches, because it does for most people. Fix that. Lift the chest up and away from the pelvic bowl. Keep that little string pulled up from the crown of your head to keep you long and tall. Now I'm going to try to look over my left shoulder as much as I can. And again, it doesn't matter how far you go. You don't want to push it too much. I always say in class, practice your yoga in a C plus fashion, not an A plus fashion, because you may injure yourself. And especially if you don't have a teacher sitting beside you watching this class, because I'm assuming you don't, um, it's best not to push yourself in any postures, unless there's a teacher watching you. So I'm looking over my left shoulder as best I can, and the moment I feel any kind of pain in the spine or back, I'm going to back off. Now as you're sitting here, see if your shoulders are tight, if they've scrunched up like this. Relax the shoulders. So the arms are loose, the hands and fingers are loose, but your core is strong and proud and tall. And you're looking over the left shoulder, you keep your chin parallel to the floor, Unclench the jaw, relax the lips, the face is soft and smooth, and you're breathing slowly and deeply. Now on the next inhalation, your face will come back to center and your body will follow. And you've only been moving from the belly button up, from the pelvic bowl down. This part of your body is still practicing seated mountain, balanced and grounded evenly. So let's do the other side. We sit proud in seated mountain. We take a deep breath in, and when you exhale, engage the Uddiyana Bandha, and from the waist up, very gently rotate to the right, and be very careful. If there's any pain, you may need to back off, come out, become tall again, and go into it. Be very cautious. So I'm looking over the right shoulder this time. My right arm is resting on the back of the chair. I'm relaxing my right shoulder. My left arm is resting on the outside of the right thigh, relaxing that shoulder, keeping the chest proud as far away from the pelvic bowl as possible, and looking over the right shoulder as much as I can. Chin parallel to the floor, jaw relaxed, eyebrows and face smooth, and make sure your knees don't touch. Keep them hip width apart. You're breathing very slowly in a very relaxed manner, 
and your mind is focused only on your yoga and nothing else. On the next inhalation, let's bring the face and the body back to center. Take a deep breath in through the nose and sigh through the mouth. Let's sit back on the chair, lift your legs, lift your arms, and circle the wrists and the ankles, just to warm up the wrists and the ankles. A little bit in one direction with slow, relaxed breathing. You'll pause and then a little bit in the opposite direction to warm up the ankles and the wrists. And when you feel balanced, you'll relax the circles and let the feet and the hands rest. Leaning back on the chair, we're going to warm up the right hip joint. So you'll pick up the right leg, hold it with the right hand if you can, and just very gently circle that right femur bone in the right hip socket. So this large leg bone, the femur. You want to circle it very small if you have hip issues, and if you have none, again, your circle can be bigger. You can make it as big as you need to for it to feel good for you. You'll pause and then go in the opposite direction with that circle. And keep going until you feel like you're balanced. You've gone both clockwise and counterclockwise the same. And when you feel that, you can relax that circle. Pick up the other leg and then circle that leg bone in that hip socket, the left femur. See if there's any issues in there, if it feels dry or if it feels like it's not moving very well. You may have some synovial fluid issues, you may have some, some hip issues that you need to baby. So be very careful, don't move too big. And then you'll pause and then go in the opposite direction. And see how the hip joint feels when you move in the opposite direction. It may not feel the same as it did the first circle. That's just another imbalance that yoga is pointing out to you. <laughs> It does that a lot. So once you feel balanced, you've gone in both directions at the same time, you can relax that leg. You come back to your seated mountain, take a deep breath in, and a sigh out. Our next warm up is for the arms. I'm gonna bring my hands into prayer position. And as I inhale, I'm going to bring those prayer hands up as high as they can go. And again, it doesn't matter how high they can go. If this is as high as your shoulders will let you take your hands, that's perfectly fine. And on the next exhalation, you'll open the hands and the arms will draw a circle around your mountain body. And they come all the way down. Okay, so every time your hand, you inhale, your hands will come together in prayer. You'll inhale your prayer hands up as high as your shoulders will take you today, and you will exhale and draw the circle around your mountain body with your hands all the way down. Inhale, bring the hands together in prayer pose. Inhale them all the way up to the sky. And exhale, the hands come all the way down. Drawing a sun around your mountain body. Bring your hands back to your thighs. Take a deep breath in through the nose and sigh through the mouth. <sighs> Let's clasp the fingers together. Turn the palms inside out and push the palms away and feel a nice little stretch through the wrists and the forearms. And on the next inhalation, push the palms away and up. Straightening the arms as much as you can and as always, if this is as high as your arms can go today, that's as high as they can go. If they can go a little bit higher, that's fine too. It doesn't matter how high they go, it matters that your shoulder joints and your wrists and your forearms are getting the stretch they deserve. Notice if your knees go together or if your mountain body slouches. Okay, come right back to the proud mountain, push the palms up. Remember the body is always practicing mountain pose no matter what the arms and legs do. And we have our jaw soft, our face relaxed, our breath is even and slow. And on the next exhalation, push the palms away and slowly let the arms float down. 
The hands will rest on your thighs. You'll take a breath in through the nose and a sigh through the mouth. On the next exhalation, we'll stretch the neck. We're almost done the warm-ups. Exhale the right ear down to the right shoulder. Now notice if the whole body wants to lean, don't let that happen. Keep both sits bones grounded. Keep the chest proud. Keep both shoulders relaxed, both arms soft, both fingers soft. And just let the head go down to the right side. So you're stretching the left side of the neck. And imagine that you're breathing up and down the left side of the throat. There's plenty of room on the left side. Keep your face soft. Keep your mind focused on exactly what you're doing. And try to keep your breath as even as possible. The inhales and the exhales even in duration. On the next inhalation, bring the head back up to center, keeping your body in mountain. When you're ready, take a big breath in through the nose and exhale, the left ear goes down to the left shoulder and we're stretching the right side of the neck. Notice if your whole body is leaning, for most beginners it does. You just Bring your sits bones right back to the seat of the chair so they're evenly grounded, keeping the chest away from the pelvic bowl, keeping the shoulders relaxed and the arms soft, the jaw relaxed. The left ear is trying to get to the left shoulder. The left shoulder is not trying to get up to the left ear. Keep it down and stretch the right side of the neck, breathing up and down the right side of the throat. Focus on what you're doing as if this is the only thing going on in the entire world right now, your yoga. And when you feel balanced, you'll inhale your head back up to center. Take a breath in. And when you exhale, the chin will go down to meet the chest to stretch the back of the neck. But the chest is also going to come up to meet the chin. So as the chest bone, the sternum bone comes up, and the chin goes down, remember the back of your throat is wide open. You won't choke. You can breathe up and down the back of your throat and you're stretching the neck muscles, the back, all the way from the back of the skull, probably down towards the shoulder blades. You're also squeezing the thyroid and parathyroid glands here at the front of the throat. So you're giving them a good squeeze, a good massage. Stay here as long as you need this stretch. Notice if your body fell and went into out of mountain and fix that. Get the chest up, keep the body in mountain, squeeze the thyroid and parathyroid glands and stretch the back of the neck as you breathe up and down the back of the throat. And on the next inhalation, the head can float slowly back up. Breathe in through the nose and sigh through the mouth. Our last warm up, the face. So if you have any ego or any vanity when you come to your yoga class, this will eliminate it. Stretching the face muscles. You make the weirdest faces that you've ever made in your whole life. You move the cheek, the chin, you move the eyebrows, you move the temples, you try to get all the tension out of your face and you will never ever look beautiful when you're doing this, so don't even bother. And then you open your mouth as wide as you can and you'll stick out your tongue and wiggle it and you're trying to get as much tension out of the jaw and the face as possible. We hold a lot of tension in the face and the jaw. Okay, you can do that for as long as you want to as well. And when you're done, you'll sit back in your mountain where you probably are already, breathe in through the nose and sigh through the mouth. <sighs> and that's the end of our warm-ups for now.